Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to talk to you guys a little bit about simple audio mixing inside of DaVinci Resolve 16. So you'll notice that I already have my timeline set up in the Fairlight tab. That's the second from the right. You can see over here that this audio interface is only for editing audio. The only visual indicator we get is the little preview window in the top right. So in my timeline, there's four audio tracks, and you'll notice that I've separated them into four different categories. So in audio one, I have the original audio from the clips I brought into the timeline. In this case though, because these are stock footage clips, they don't actually have any audio. In audio track two, I'm using this for voiceovers or basically narration that I've recorded in DaVinci Resolve. In audio track three, we have sound effects. And then in audio track four, we have music. So aside from the obvious fact that this allows you to have overlapping sounds on your different audio tracks, it's a, it's a good idea to separate your different types of sounds to their own tracks so that you can customize things based on what kind of audio you're dealing with. So if you have, for instance, audio track two set up for all of your voiceovers, you may want in the mixer to add in a audio effect such as Fairlight effects and then noise reduction. So this will remove the background noise from voiceovers that you may record, which would be really useful for any unedited raw narration, but you might not want that in the music track because that might actually remove some of the sound from the music. So with noise reduction added into the mixer for audio track two, we can go ahead and play this back and you'll be able to see that it will go ahead and do some noise reduction. So here we have an amazing sunset occurring in the depths of Norway where it is really cold. As you can see, there's a lot of snow. Not many people wow. live there. And it's wow. really, really wow. cold. Okay, so hopefully if you are watching the so if you were watching the noise reduction window, uh, you would have noticed that as time goes by, it'll automatically adjust the curve for the noise reduction, figuring out what frequencies are just background noise and which ones are me actually speaking. So that can be one really useful tool you can include. So aside from that, you can see that each individual audio track has their own set of tools that you can customize for each one, such as an equalizer to emphasize or de-emphasize uh, different frequencies, uh, dynamics controls if you want to set up a noise gate to cut off low sounds, or a compressor to reduce some of the high-end sounds that are above a certain threshold, to reduce how loud they are and compared with your threshold. And then the pan tools, if you want one of your audio tracks to be emphasized on your left speakers or your right speakers or your front or your back speakers, if your project is dealing with surround sound. And then you can see that each track also has its own slider bar for increasing or decreasing audio volume all across the track. So that could be useful if you are doing all of your voiceovers at the same volume, but maybe you do multiple takes and you don't want to click on the bar that appears in each audio track to increase or decrease the audio manually, but you'd rather increase that in the mixer, but then you'd rather increase the audio on all clips that are inside of that audio track too. So one of the things I left intentionally unedited before starting this video was that the audio volume across the audio tracks are not set up very well. You can see if I expand audio track four that the audio of the music is actually quite loud. For audio track three, there's a few sound effects. Over here we have some beeps and then over on the right, there's just a girl saying wow a bunch of times. And the voiceover audio is also quite quiet compared to the music. Now. When it comes to music tracks, I would say that in many cases you will need to edit it on a track by track basis, but because you only are going to include a handful of music tracks in your project anyway, it's very easy to actually just go ahead and modify this when you only have a few clips. So if I click on this bar and bring it down a few decibels, then the music won't be so blaring when we're actually trying to play the audio. For the sound effects in audio track three, it's kind of a similar story. Sound effects pulled from different sources are gonna be recorded at different volumes. So once again, you're probably going to want to zoom in on each of these audio effects and edit them manually. So you can increase the volume by clicking on the bar and bringing it up. Maybe we also want to do that for the wow sound effect. So zooming in. If you want to select more than one clip at a time, I can hold control down to select all three of these. And then in the inspector, I can actually increase the clip volume here as well. So if we bump this up, say five or seven decibels, that's probably good enough for all three of these audio clips. So if you have the same audio clip duplicated, that can be a useful way to edit that. As an alternative, you can make your edits before you duplicate it and copy it to different parts of your timeline. 
Now, as far as narration voiceover goes, if you're using the same microphone across the entire track, then there's a good chance it's going to be roughly the same sound. But for the voiceover narration, I want to make sure that that's going to be increasing the sound all the way across the track. If you're using the same microphone with the same speaker, then it should theoretically be the same sound. So increasing the volume in the mixer instead is going to work out just fine. So now if we go ahead and actually play back this video from the start, we should see that the sound levels should be much better than they were before. So let's go ahead and hit play. So here we have an amazing sunset occurring in the depths of Norway where it is really cold. As you can see, there's a lot of snow, not many people wow. live there, and it's wow. really, really wow. cold. Okay, so in terms of audio levels, that was actually pretty good. So one more thing that I would probably modify is that as the music is going to fade out for a news broadcast or something similar. Okay, so one more thing I would change about the audio in these clips is that as the music is coming to an end and we're switching over to the video for a news broadcast, just as an example, I would want the music to fade out a little bit more. So if you grab on these notches on the top right hand corner, then you can actually pull this out to the left for a fade out effect. So as far as you pull it, it's going to start at 100% of its current volume and it'll reach zero by the time it gets to the end of the clip there. You can also do this at the start of your audio clips for a fade in. So if I go ahead and play this back, that should have a really easy, nice fade out effect. So here we have an amazing so one more thing we can add to audio track 2 is the dialog processor which exists in DaVinci Resolve 16 and up. So if we go over to audio track 2, I want this to process the dialog track obviously. Uh, I'm going to hit the plus sign for effects, go to Fairlight Effects, Dialog Processor. And the settings I've been liking to use is changing Excite from female to male, obviously. And then decreasing the rumble from 115 to around 70. I found that having the D-Rumble set to a higher setting with the microphone I'm using actually caused it to have a worse sounding quality rather than better, so lowering a frequency down can actually kind of de-emphasize an effect and make it not interfere with the good audio that you want to keep. So now with that dialog processor added on to Audio Track 2, we can go ahead and play it one more time. So here we have an amazing sunset occurring in the depths of Norway where it is really cold. As you can see, there's a lot of snow. Not many people wow. live there. And it's wow. really, really wow. cold. So hopefully this video has given you guys a couple ideas of how you can control and edit your audio across different tracks inside of the Fairlight tab of DaVinci Resolve 16. I wanted to keep it short and simple with this video, so that's going to be it. I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my future video content.